What's up guys, this is Travis Brady. So this is a question uh, I've received over the years from a lot of clients. Um, I have actually been through this myself and I'm sure that if you're building a business or leading a team or whatever else it is, you'll come across this same thing too. So the question goes uh, something like this. Um, I ha I've hired some people, they don't stay long, it ends badly. How do I build a team? Or more importantly, how do I build someone that's going to stay and not go out and create whatever they wanna create that's going to compete against myself, okay? So uh, I experienced this uh, years ago is um, I needed help in my business. I the, the warrior comes to terms with the warrior and steps into the king. As soon as the warrior realizes that he can't do it all by himself. Okay. I remember, <laughs> remember when I was younger, um, I, uh, I was a hard worker, but I didn't love working, if that makes sense. Um, I preferred to do the things that I want to do like any other kid, right? And I remember uh, times in my life where my mom or dad be like, fine, go to your room. I'm going to I'm do it by myself. I don't need your help. And so I think I kind of embraced that a little bit in, in my life growing up is, um, fine, I don't need your help. I'll do it by yourself. If you can't do it the way I can, so just get out of here and I'll do it by myself. Well, what ends up happening is you're lifting it. You're lifting your business. You're lifting everything by yourself. And it doesn't matter how strong you are. When you're trying to lift stuff by yourself, it's just heavy. Even someone that's probably not as strong as you, okay, even though they're not as strong as you, the fact that they're helping you lift makes a lighter load for yourself, okay? So first thing that I think it's important to understand is no one is going to do it as good as you. Nope. No one's going to do it as good as you, okay? You're the king for a reason. You're the leader of your team, of your business. No one's gonna do what you do as good as you. Okay, and I think that's the biggest problem is that people keep hiring people, expecting that person to do it as good as them. They're, they're not, okay? Your strengths are your strengths. It's easy for you, okay? It's kind of like going to the gym. I'll work out with my friends. Um, uh, on a weekly basis, get 225 on the bar, easy, okay, easy for me. Now, if I project that it's easy and it should be easy for everyone else, then I'm going to make people feel bad, okay? If I make people feel bad, feel insignificant, not good enough, people go where they're loved and appreciated. People go where they're loved and appreciated. So the more you hold these unfair, unrealistic expectations with your team, which is, which is what I did, okay, years ago, I, I was constantly making them feel like they just weren't good enough, okay? And so they would quit, they would leave, and guess how I felt? I mean, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe I'm not a good leader, maybe I really don't know how to influence people, maybe, you know, Maybe I should just quit this all together, right? We let our brain kind of run to the worst case scenario. It's very interesting why your brain does that, right? So we, you know, I talk a lot about the four different archetypes and the reason why I do is because I believe it helps us really understand ourselves and it helps us understand other people. And I believe the more we can understand our behavior and know ourselves and create ourselves, the more we'll be able to know other people and help them create who they want to be, not what you think they should be, who they want to be. So this goes into uh, fixing the problem, okay, finding the solution, which is you want to find other people, okay, that are good at things you don't want to be good at, good at things that, um, that maybe you'll just never be good at, right? My grammar and my spelling is atrocious, right? I've been told this over the years, it's improving okay, by actually receiving criticism. Funny how that happens, right? Sometimes we grow through the, the painful times. Um, but that's not, that's not my strength, okay? My wife, my uh, client manager, Alona, she'll do that stuff for me. I'll, I'll hire it out, okay? And so the same thing is in your business. You wanna find people that love, love what they're doing. And so, um, you know, there was a part in, in growing my business where I would see people, 
right? I would see people and they don't have any route, they don't have any vision, which drives me nuts. What do you mean you don't have a vision? What do you mean you don't have a purpose? What do you mean don't want to do this? Here, look at why don't you be good at this? And so I'd kind of, I'd kind of push them in, in, into that, right? And what this started to do is it started to cause a separation, a wedge in the relationship because I was pushing something that was my idea and not their idea. So your goal as a leader is to not only find what you're not good at and you don't want to be good at, but find what other people are good at and want to be better at. And your goal as a leader is to help them become next gen in that. And I use that word a lot, but help them Help them with other X factors and things that they can add into their process to even make them better. And this is what leaders do. They create other leaders, okay? They create other leaders. And so now it leads into kind of the last part of it is, well, whams if they leave? Whams if they go out and create another business? Whams if they, whams if they do that? Great, great, that's what you want, okay? Other real leaders, help others create what they ultimately want to create. Okay, that looks good on you as a leader. Okay, that's not something you should worry about. That's not something you should be fearful of. Okay, that's something you should embrace. Okay, but when you're leading in light and love, what happens is they stay with you. Okay, they feel appreciated. They feel loved. They feel like they're enough. They stay with you. They don't want to go out and battle, you know, uh, it on their own. They don't want to have to go out and do it. They can, they have the opportunity to do that, but they choose to stay with you. Okay. They choose to stay with you. And if they don't, okay, you can't control people. You only have influence over people you can't control. And I believe a lot of people think they can have control over people. They can force people and that control and force is negative. So in conclusion and so what it essentially does is it creates fear it creates depression it creates anxiety it creates all these things that it's not too fun to feel at the end of the day right okay help people get what they want and you will get what you want but do it and do it for reasons that are true to you if we're just doing things because we're expecting something in return, I don't believe that's the right reason, okay? I believe we want to find this beautiful flow of give and receive that is serving to you and also serving to them. And if they don't receive what you're giving, that's totally fine. You weren't giving it to receive something back. You were giving it because simply giving it was filling you up, it was making you feel good. Okay, I think a lot of times we give with the expectation of receiving. I know that's, um, again, going back to part of the reason why I struggled back then, right? It's to, it's to give and receive. However, if we're giving it in the expectations, okay, expectations kill people, if we give it in the expectations to receive, it's not going to feel genuine. It's not going to feel heartfelt. Hope that helped. Okay, be inspired in what you're doing. Be next gen. The world needs you.